Well, God bless you, friends. This is Dan Kearney here in Telangana, India. I want to talk to you. Uh, I've had a brother, a friend of mine, request that I make a video regarding the different persecutions that I've experienced since I've been serving the Lord in India. Um, I came to India in August of 2009, which makes it this month will be seven years completed. And um, I, I have been called of God, especially to pastor and to be an open-air preaching evangelist, uh, among other things, uh, among social ministry as well. But my burden primarily is for the proclamation of the gospel, because as Romans 1.16 says, it is the gospel which is the power of God unto salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. And as I believe it's 1 Corinthians 1.18 says, God has chosen the foolishness of what we preach to save those that believe. Um, my point is this, brothers, the gospel must be proclaimed. We don't need gimmicks. We don't need uh, marketing strategies. We don't need winsome, charismatic uh, personalities. And uh, we simply need the bold, unashamed proclamation of the good news of Jesus Christ without regard for personal safety, personal comfort. And Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 25, he who seeks to, he who loves his life will lose it. Whoever hates his life for my sake will truly find it. Uh, Jesus also said in Luke chapter 12, verses 26 and 27, If anyone comes to me and does not hate his father, his mother, his son, his daughter, his wife, and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. Jesus was not a self-help guru. Jesus was a self-hate guru. He literally said that. Again, John 12, 25, Luke 12, 26, you can search and see for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Be at Acts 17, 11, Berean. Search the scriptures. And I, I, I simply, um, evident, evidently, and to God be the glory, sole ideal glory, uh, the experiences that I've undergone have been a source of great uh, encouragement to many believers across the world through the social media. And I want to just uh, re uh, recount and enumerate the various persecutions that I've experienced. Um, just last night, just yesterday, I was beaten for preaching the gospel, beaten pretty, pretty badly. Um, Praise God, there were no concussions or broken bones or any, and no bloodshed last night, but I was repeatedly punched and kicked and slapped and almost strangled with my amplifier neck strap simply for preaching the gospel, simply for going in the center and declaring with a loud voice and a, and a, little, a small amplifier and distributing about 70 New Testaments in Hindi, English, and Telugu, uh, simply for going out and preaching the gospel boldly. Uh, an organization called the Badrang Dal, which is a Hindu radical group, and it's the youth wing of the RSS, which is, a, again, another Hindu extremist faction. They came and they uh, told me, who are you as a foreigner to come to our land, our Hindu country, and spread your Western Christian ideas? Uh, they, you know, uh, they, they said, who do you think you are? And I said, and they said, what is your purpose here? I said, to tell people the truth, because the truth will set them free. Uh, I'm not doing this for money or for any other thing. Uh, no one pays me to go open and preach the gospel. This is something I've done of my own accord. I never, uh, I, I serve the Lord um, of my own accord. I've come to India. I have an, I, I, my, our, a military pension. Is, is, is a, I'm able to provide for my family, care for myself. I'm able to be self-sustaining missionary through my military pension. Um, that provides for my needs and my family's needs. And any extra money we get is for purchasing our Bibles or for food and uh, various social work that we do. That being said, uh, I, I didn't say all that to them. I just simply told them that um, I, I'm here simply to preach the gospel, uh, to tell people the truth. And they said, uh, they began to beat me. They began to slap me and punch me and kick me in the back. And I attempted to uh, escape. I didn't run because I knew if I ran, uh, through the various experiences I've had, through the, the many experiences I've had, when I when we run from people, it evokes in them this predatorial response, and they go into this um, aggressive uh, uh, fight, you know, catch the prey mode, and usually it, it results in a very more severe beating if you attempt to flee instead of attempting to reason. In this culture, if you attempt to flee, they presume then that you have admitted by your fleeing, you have admitted that you're guilty of some crime, and that's why you're seeking to evade and escape justice. So I didn't run, but I started to walk away, and, and they didn't like that. So as soon as they saw me trying to walk away, that's when they grabbed me and started really severely beating me, and they started dragging me in the streets. They started telling me, if you don't say Jai Sri Ram, if you do not say Hail Rama, Sri Rama, which was a Hindu god king in the Hindu mythology, 
If you do not swear allegiance to our God, we will continue to beat you. We'll continue to, we will not let you go. Finally, they even said, we're going to put tikka on your mark. We're going to put a mark. You're going to have to bow down before our God and receive the mark of, of uh, Hinduism upon your forehead. And they were dragging me, in they were literally dragging me, a mob of about 50 men, in front of a temple, preparing to f force me to convert. And, and I, I, said, I said, I refuse. I am a servant of Jesus Christ. I, I, I cannot deny my Lord. I said, brothers, I care about you. I don't want you to die and go to hell. That's the thing. The only thing that motivates me is that I believe in a literal place called hell. And I'm convinced that if you pray to statues that can't hear your prayers, that you will go to hell and I want you to be saved. I said that with compassion in my voice. And it was evident, palpable to them. They recognized, they saw my motive. They saw that compassion was the, uh, was the incentive, not, um, not uh, anti-Indianism, anti-Hinduism, just simply the truth. And... They would not listen to me, and I tried to. Then I tried to. I tried to go into the traffic. I, I tried to grab onto an auto rickshaw, and one man jumped on jumped on top of the auto and grabbed me, uh, and pulled me off the auto. Then I grabbed onto a man's motorcycle. I, I thought I, I thought I was going to be killed. You have to understand this. I thought I was going to be killed. Uh, these men were uncontrollably violent. They were continually punching me, continually slapping me, continually kicking me in the back. I didn't know at what moment what someone would brandish a knife and secretly stab me, and no one would know who killed me. Um, so I was calling, pleading with the, the with pass, pleading with passerbys, uh, not to be rubberneckers, but to help me because I'm a foreigner here being attacked uh, for no crime. No one intervened, but. Um, Anyway, so that happened. I went to the police this morning. Uh, they, they filed a police case against me, but I failed. I, I would not uh, do a police case against them. I made it very clear to them. I said, "Brothers, you are even though you're Badrang Dal, you are my friends. I have nothing, no personal enmity, no personal quarrel with you. I want you to be saved, and I want to, I want to underscore my love for you by the fact that I am not going to put a police case against you or, or press charges against you because I wanted to be abundantly clear that I am not your enemy." even though I have every right to press charges against you. And I think that goes a long way. Um, Jesus said, right, um, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who despitefully use you. So that was one. Then I'll tell you another time. I was uh, in, uh, back in, we're, we're talking about persecutions in India. In Israel also, we, I've, been, you know, we've been, I've been beaten many times. I've had three men jump on me and strangle me down in the city of Elat on, the, red, on, the, on the, the banks of the Red Sea. This is the southernmost tip of the country of Israel where the borders of Egypt and Jordan converge. We were distributing a Hebrew New Testament uh, during a youth festival called the uh, uh, Bumela. And uh, these three Jewish men, they just, they jumped on me and started strangling me out. I, I didn't know if I'd make it out that night either. On other occasions I've had, in Israel, I've had Jews literally throw me to the ground uh, punch me in the punch me, uh, kick me in the gut, punch me in the face, punch, kick me in the back, spit directly in my face, burn me with cigarettes, try to set me on fire with New Testaments under my clothes. Me and other brothers, also other street preaching brothers, Zephaniah Mel, Don Carnes, they tried to uh, evidently they tried to murder us. They tried to set us on fire. Uh, they, they pushed me on train tracks. Uh, so that happened many times. But we were, I think we're focusing on India. So. And in America also we had persecution, but we'll focus on our India experiences. Uh, back in January of 2016, we were preaching in a very remote, small village where there's no church, a completely unreached village. People there had never, some people have never heard the name of Jesus. There's no, no gospel was there. And, uh, you know, as Paul said in Romans 15, that he makes it his ambition to preach Christ where he's not been named. And likewise, we share that passion to share Christ where he's not been named. And thus, we build another person's foundation. Um, we want to be used where the need is the greatest. And not, nevertheless, we were preaching, and um, after three times, this is our third time attempting to penetrate this village with the gospel, the, uh, some youth became very angry. Also members of this Bajrang Dal, the members of this Hindu radical youth group, they attempted to beat us, but by God's grace, I was able to tell my brother-in-law, Swarup, to get in the car quickly. And right when they were distracted, we were, I was able to hit it, hit it into first gear, punch it into first gear, and put the pedal to the metal and peel out and escape before they they started to rob our uh, things out of our car. Uh, and uh, they took a huge brick and they threw it at us, and it totally shattered the rear window, the hatchback window of our car. Uh, if that had hit us in the head, we'd probably be in a coma. We're dead. It was a huge rock, and they threw it hard. 
Also, I had some, some things stolen from me last night when I had my amplifier stolen and they were grabbing after all my items. Um, okay, so that happened back in January of 2016. Last night we were persecuted, then January 2016 uh, we were attacked, but praise God, no physical harm, just the destruction of property, glass shattered on the car, they tried to hurt us very badly. Uh, back in 2015, uh, there were several, two or three occasions where we were beaten up. Uh, we were preaching in the city of Tenali in Andhra Pradesh, preaching to the coolie workers early in the morning, about easily 200, 300 day laborers waiting to be hired, waiting for work, unskilled or semi-skilled workers just standing around with nothing to do, uh, just, just like the parable in Matthew chapter 20 where Jesus says uh, the kingdom of heaven can be like a man, uh, a master of a house going out into the, a uh, master of a vineyard going out into the market to hire laborers to work in his vineyard and, you know, and saying, then why do you stand your idol all day to those who were, who were waiting all day in the market? And he employed them and he said, you know, go work in my vineyard. And so likewise, we've employed that strategy based on the Bible. The Bible gives us the best wisdom and the best, uh, 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 the best wisdom regarding tactics, evangelistic strategies. And so we go early in the morning many times and we preach to coolie workers and day laborers. And they, um, as we were preaching to hundreds of people just standing there, uh, we we're you know, not far from a temple. There's temples on every corner in India. It's not possible to not preach near a temple. But as we were preaching, it's rolling, yeah, it's working? As we were preaching, uh, one uh, angry R RSS man came and said, get off the car. I was standing on top of my car. I installed a luggage rack on top of our little coupe uh, to facilitate the proclamation of the gospel being within earshot of the most, the, you know, to give us a maximal uh, the hearing, maximal uh, audience. And um, I, I just, I, 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 it breaks my heart to see the people groping in darkness, wandering in hopelessness in India, knowing that we have the cure, we have the panacea, we have the gospel, and we must proclaim it. I want as many people to hear Christ's gospel as possible. This is why the Lord has compelled me to go to these extreme measures that some might consider a fringe, a lunatic fringe or insane. A wise man once said, go out on a limb, for that's where the fruit is. I think that's a very wise statement. Go out on a limb. That's where the fruit is. And nonetheless, um, we began preaching and the RSS came. This man was very angry. So I got down off the, the car and I, I, you know, he said, who do you think you are? And he called his friends and uh, I, I said, I, I, said I, I have every right to speak here. I, I, I must obey God rather than men. And they began, to put, they began to beat me. They began to punch me repeatedly in the face. Uh, I, I, at that point, uh, I, I took off my, my sandals and I fled because they were attempting to apprehend me. My brother-in-law, he was safe. He was able to get in the car. Um, they're not concerned with him. They're con they hate me because I'm the foreigner. And they, uh, so I, I, I left my sandals behind and I, and I, and I booked it. I ran like I, like I used to run in the army as fast as I could. And uh, they chased me on motorcycles. Uh, eventually, because they're on motorcycles, they, they grabbed me and they threw me into an auto rickshaw, you know, those three-wheel tuk-tuks, you know, autos. They threw me in the auto. Uh, but by God's grace, I was able to, um, how shall we say this? Uh, I was able to make the, lead them to believe that I was cooperative, that I would not resist. And so right when their guard was down, and they weren't paying attention, I jumped out of the auto. I jumped out of the moving vehicle and I bolted, I sprinted. They chased me down on the motorcycle. They gave me another round of, of blows, another round of punches and kicks. and and uh, but I was able to run through a narrow passageway that they could not fit with their motorcycles. Then I made a right turn after that alleyway, and Swadup was there with the car. Now they attempted to steal the car also, but Swadup was able to hold on to the keys before they could steal our car. So I was able to run, and I was able to uh, jump into the car. And I jumped into the car. Swadup was, you know, our adrenaline was pumping. Our, our heart rates were, were through the roof. They, they rammed into our car with the motorcycle, with one of the guys on their motorcycles, rammed and damaged our car, <laughs> smashed into it. We had a high speed chase, but by God's grace, these, these, they had low powered motorcycles that were not able to catch up with our, our, quick, our quick little coupe. And uh, so that, was, that happened in 2015. Uh, another instance of, of, of persecution in 2015, um, besides Israel being, a, uh, yeah, and Israel was attacked, thrown on the ground by that one man. Um, this year, an Israel kicked, like I said, it was kicked, burned. Last year, it was thrown to the ground by an angry Jew. Um, they, they burned my New Testaments, the Hebrew New Testaments. But uh, we're limiting our, 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 our li limiting these anecdotes, these vignettes, uh, to our India experience. So, uh, 2015, that Tanali, that time, 
I'm trying to think here. Then what else? Uh, Israel, okay. Let me go back now. 2014. In 2014, we were... Uh, we were in July, I believe. We were, oh no, no, I'm sorry, it was in September, September of 2014. We were giving out homeless, uh, home, giving homeless men uh, food parcels and packages of, 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 of biryani rice, of good, nice quality rice. About 25 homeless men sleeping under the bridge or on the bridge in downtown Guntur. And um, as we were giving them out, after we gave the meal, we told the men we wanted to give them the words of God. We wanted to feed not only their bodies, but their, their spirit with the word of God. Because man does not live by bread only, but by every word of God. So we gathered them together. We began to preach to them. And it was about 10 o'clock at night. And it, yeah, it was a little bit da it's dangerous. But we had, I had a team of men with me. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, as we were teaching, uh, we, we, uh, in, my, in our peripheral vision, we observed that these motorcycles are assembling behind us, ominously gathering behind us. And after preaching for about 25 minutes to these men about how Christ can give them hope and can get them back on their feet and give them dignity and get them off the street and, and he can save them from their past and their sins and he can give them hope and life and forgiveness. And I, when, I, when, I, when I brought it to a, a conclusion and told the people to repent and look to Jesus Christ, a man grabbed my arm and started shouting, Jay Sriram, Jay Sriram, a member of the uh, VHP, which is another Hindu radical group. And they began to uh, beat me. They began to punch me. They began to kick me. And then they took my shirt. I was wearing an Indian style shirt. It was not a Western shirt with buttons, but it's called a kurta. So there's no buttons. So point is, like a t-shirt, they were able to wrap it around my neck tightly. And uh, my, my carotid arteries were being pinched. Uh, I felt unconsciousness was coming. I, my life flashed before my eyes. I thought about my wife and children. I thought, okay, Lord, this is it. And, uh, but by God's grace, at that moment, Instead of just succumbing to death, because I do have small children and I do have a wife who's a complete orphan, uh, I threw them off of me. I didn't throw any blows, even though they were punching me and kicking me repeatedly in the face. I uh, threw them off of me and I sprinted. Of course, they caught me on their motorcycles again, gave me another round of beating. And they robbed me, they robbed everything in my pockets. The next day was my, my, my younger daughter's first birthday. I had, a lot, I had some, a lot of cash in my pocket because they were preparing me to buy a cake and a nice dress for my, my, my little daughter's birthday. And they stole all the money out of my, my, my pocket and they beat me. Um, then before that, uh, about three months earlier, in July of 2014, we were preaching on top of a mountain. I had about nine evangelists and pastors with me. And we were preaching in a remote village and we were up high up on a mountain top with an amplifier. For about an hour and a half, we preached the Word of God within, within audible range, easily two, three miles. We are preaching over the coastal plain of India on, on top of a mountain with an amplifier. So the, 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 the sound of the gospel was traveling for miles. Matter of fact, I zoomed in with my phone camera and I saw entire families sitting atop the roofs of their homes listening to the Word of God as it was being preached by me and the other brothers up there on the mountain. So finally, about after an hour and a half of preaching, these uh, Hindus, they couldn't take it anymore. So the Brahmin, the Brahmin priest, the Hindu pagan priest, came up on the mountain and in Telugu was telling me that this is our mountain, this is our time, because right now the, the ruling political party of India is called the BJP, the Bharat, uh, uh, Bharat uh, Janata Party, which is a Hindu radical group. And so what they did was they, 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 they beat me and... Competition. Eh? Okay, uh, local ready, local ready. Yeah. Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you. Tell her to tell her and make one song, okay? Okay. So let me. Okay, bye. You need much little kaula water. So, I'm making a video here. So what are we talking about? So we're on top of the mountain and the uh, Bada Janata party, is, they said this is our time, you know, this is our Hindu government time. Uh, who do you think you are to come here and preach to us? And there was no temple on this mountain, this was a complete, just, a, just a mountain, you know. And it was a very hot day, it was probably 100, nearly 125 degrees that day. One of the pastors was vomiting, it was, like, it was a real Spartan climb up that mountain and that extreme heat and standing on that mountain for an hour and a half in the baking sun on the bare rock face and preaching the gospel. Uh, so the Hindu priest comes up and uh, he says, get off of our mountain. So we go down the mountain and they beat the tar out of us. They, uh, they took a wooden club, they hit me across the face, hit me across the back of the head. They punched me repeatedly, uh, kicked me repeatedly. They, um, 
then they take a water hose and they wrap it around my neck and they're dragging me on the road and they're getting ready to, uh, from all I can tell, they're getting ready to, to kill me. So at first I'm frightened, you know, I don't want to die. I, I don't want no man, no man wants to die, you know, when he's 30 years old and newly you know, married for a few years as small kids. I mean, uh, but um, so my carnal, my carnal mind, my uh, you know, self-preservation kicked in and I, I was afraid, but then I had to resolve. As they were dragging me with this water hose around my neck, in my mind, I'd say, Lord, you, you, you say in your word, whoever seeks to save his life will lose it. And whoever seeks to preserve his life will lose it. Whatever loses my, whoever loses his life for my sake and for the gospels will truly find it. So I said, Lord, I prayed, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. And I hung out my hands like this. In the, Lord, into your hands I commit my spirit. I hung my head down. Lord, I'm ready to take a death blow for your kingdom. I'm ready to be strangled out. I'm ready to be whatever they're going to do to me. Thrash me severely, break my bones, or kill me. I'm ready for it. Um, the Lord granted me that grace. But by God's grace, one of the Telugu brothers with me was able to pacify, placate the, the, the lynch mob. And by saying that if you kill an American in Indian soil, it's going to result in adverse diplomatic uh, consequences, you know, adverse repercussions for diplomacy. And so many Indians are getting jobs in the U.S. and migrating to the U.S. and working in the U.S. and studying in the U.S. So by God's grace, we were able to escape and... Um, so and then before that, in 2014, and then in 2013, uh, one time uh, there was a Hindu procession was going by, a huge parade to a m massive idol. I was alone at this time. And this idol was um, to Sai Baba, Shirdi Sai Baba, which was a 19th century miracle worker that has been deified now in this time. And they were beating drums and, and beating these wooden sticks together, just a huge procession. And, and many times when I see these idolatrous parades, many times, I will stop my vehicle and begin to preach against the idol. I don't do that so much anymore because I do recognize it is a quick path to suicide. It's a quick path. If I want martyrdom, if I was a single man without a wife and children, I will yield to that, that spiritual impulse, to that, uh, that, that impulse to just preach against the idol. Matter of fact, that's how Timothy died. If you study uh, church history, you'll know this in Fox's Book of Martyrs that Timothy, whose name means whose name means one who honors God. And Paul, who seemed to imply in his epistles that Timothy was a timid man, somewhat uh, fearful, because uh, Paul is constantly exhorting Timothy, like in 2 Timothy uh, 1, 8 and 9, where he says, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel um, by the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which he hath... Um, uh, and then 2 Timothy 2, 3, where he says, Endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So Paul's repeated exhortations to Timothy to not be afraid of suffering and not be ashamed uh, make many commentators to believe, scholars believe that Timothy might have been suffered with trepidity and, and inhibition, fear, anxiety regarding uh, the gospel. But ultimately, you know how Timothy died. Timothy died preaching the gospel to an idolatrous procession, a parade of Greeks who were hailing their deity and Timothy began to invade and preach against that deity and began to preach the true God. And he was beaten to death and speared to death, and beaten and speared to death as a result. And um, so Timothy received that crown. And then, um, so as I was preaching in this idol, I, I, stood, I parked my motorcycle, I, I, I was the moped, I, I balanced on top of the moped. And, and I began to preach in Telugu that this is sin and that this idol cannot hear your prayers. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. He can save you from your sins. He can give you peace with your Creator. Do not pray to these gods of stone and wood who cannot hear your prayer. So they pulled me off the, the moped and I landed on my knees, which to this day I have serious knee problems between my army service as an enlisted a combat medic and then between these many of, many of these beatings, I, uh, my knees are bad now. I can't run without extreme pain. I landed right on my knees, they picked me up and they began to wail me in the face. I mean, my face was, was all bloodied. Um, the Brahmins came, Brahmin priests came, the Hindu priests, they threw me on the ground, they, they began to kick me in the face, step on my neck. Huge mob of men, I mean, about three people were beating me, but there was a huge mob that was cheering them on. And uh, they threw my moped on the ground, kicked my moped. <laughs> And uh, by God's grace, two men, they might have been angels, they might, I don't know, angels or men, they said they, they pulled me up and they pulled my bike up and said, go, get out of here quickly. Two kind men. And uh, I thought I was done for. I, I cried, I said, I have wife and children, please. I cried out, but they would not show mercy. But by God's grace, I was able to escape through the help of those men who were able to 
act as a shield to me, enable to enable me to escape. Then uh, before that, um, that was in 2014. Then we had the other episode. Uh, I was beaten unconscious uh, back in 2013 with an iron rod. Uh, these men came behind me in an SUV. I was cycling. Uh, I used a cycle for the first three years in India. I lived. I, I used. I had no. I never asked for any money, and I still don't ask for money. Uh, you know, we simply um, do our ministry and. and I, I exhort people to follow our example. So, you know, we lived a very simple life. We, I, I paid $12 a month for rent, lived in the slum. We had no Western facilities, no air conditioner, no refrigerator, no stove, no Western bathroom, no motor vehicle, no uh, washing machine, nothing, no TV, nothing. We lived uh, complete, ascetic, simple lives as it was, as it were. And we cooked with, with sticks for, for two and a half years. Uh, we had no stove, you know. My wife comes from a small village. She's completely accustomed to this more, this more rugged lifestyle. And I said, if all these Indian pastors here can use little bicycles and travel 20, 30 miles a day to, sh to share the gospel, I can do the same thing. So I was cheerful to in embrace this lifestyle. Besides, army basic training helped prepare me for this, these rough, uh, these rough uh, experiences. We got typhoid fever, became very sick. Okay, that's another story. But the point is, I was cycling. These men came on me and rammed me, and I, I think they might have been members of the RSS or VHP. I'm not sure who they were. They got out of their vehicle and they uh, they beat me with a metal rod. They, uh, I think it was like a tire iron. They hit me across the head with a tire. I've got a scar on my head still to this day from that. And uh, I woke up vomiting blood. I was covered in like like blood all over me, like blood all over me, bruises all over my body. They abused my body while I was unco I was unconscious for 30 minutes on the side of the road midday in 110 degrees while I was cycling. I was lying on the road unconscious and uh, covered in bruises. Well, they, they abused my unconscious body. And uh, I, uh, I, I finally a police officer was able to resuscitate me, bring me back to consciousness. Praise God, that, you know, they left me for dead. Praise God, the police came to my aid and, and resuscitated me. So <clears throat> that happened in 2013. Uh, now that was not as a direct consequence of open air preaching. Uh, I don't know why they beat me. I mean, I was angry a after they rammed me with their vehicle while I was cycling. I did express anger because uh, they, they, it was very clear they had deliberately rammed me. They deliberately knocked me down with their SUV. Uh, and I got off my cycle and just put my fist on their glass. What do you think you're doing? You know, ramming me down. And so I did, it, I must, you know, to be in the, in the, in the, in, for the sake of 100% you know, honest, transparency, honesty, I, you know, my anger, of course, helped to provoke them. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they started it. I mean, they, they knocked, they literally rammed my cycle with their SUV. And then they beat me unconscious and left me for dead. Which I won't necessarily count that as persecution because I, I, I'm not 100% sure who they were and what, what motivated them. And my anger, of course, helped to provoke them which I don't do that, I won't respond. That was nearly six years ago. I was a little more immature at that time. And then uh, other experiences, other persecutions, other um, times we were beaten or, uh, yeah. Oh, I mean, it, it, several times we've had people throw, while I was preaching the gospel, we were preaching, we, one time I was preaching in a, in a village uh, near on the outskirts of the city of Guntur, and we're, I was preaching, on, standing on top of a flyover, like a bridge and preaching over a marketplace with an amplifier. So many hundreds of people could hear the gospel. But some angry youth took a huge rock, a huge rock, and threw it just right past my head, hit, smashed into my car. Um, and then other experiences in America, open air preaching. And Israel, I, I pretty much told you everything about Israel, just not in detail. Uh, in, in Nepal preaching, they threatened to kill me in Nepal. I was preaching, I did a lot of open air preaching in Kathmandu. We preached in Odisha, up in North India, Wadanasi, uh, Kashi. Uh, preached in, in those areas up in north, uh, preached in Sri Lanka, uh, a lot of police intervention there. I was uh, preaching outside the Temple of the Tooth, the, the, the Buddha's tooth is there. The Sri Lankans believe that whatever king in ancient times possessed that, that temple within his ter domain, within his jurisdiction, had the rightful, uh, uh, the rightful heir to be the king of the whole island of Sri Lanka. It was a very important site when I began to preach outside that temple, telling people to look to Jesus Christ and... Uh, Anyway, yeah, the police intervened, and uh, no, no physical persecution, no violence or anything. So, um, oh, I was also, I was also uh, nearly beaten up in Jericho. I was preaching the gospel. I stood atop the park bench in Jericho, the biblical city of Jericho, which is in Palestinian territory, now the West Bank, uh, controlled by Arabs, Muslims, you know. And they nearly beat me, but I was able to run away. 
Uh, but the police intercepted me. I, I had to spend a whole I had to spend a, a, a whole night in the police station. I had to sleep in a police station. First at a military base in the police station, I was arrested. Uh, they said you because uh, in Jordan I was arrested. They said you can't be spreading this gospel, this Jesus in this Muslim land. This is a kingdom, Muslim kingdom, is distributing gospel tracts in Arabic and preaching. And, and no, not open air preaching. I didn't pre open air preaching in Jordan, but open air preaching in Jericho in the West Bank there. Uh, that also resulted in me getting uh, detained by the police, uh, arrested, detained, and then. Uh, but they, the police saved me from a severe beating by the Muslims there. And so I'm pretty tired. I'm, I'm just, you know, last night again, I, I've been very sick. Uh, in, in India, we always get sick. There's always some stomach virus or some. I have now, I have this, some rashes on my body. Here. We have some HIV patients that live in our house, uh, widows and orphans, and, and they. They had some rash, and this rash is contagious. I've been inside, can't sleep, and we're scratching all over, and, and that, and stomach virus. And then last night was stress. Of course, there, of course, there's some psychological duress after being uh, beaten up. But praise God, it was no, no broken bones, no concussions, just, just more insult and shame. And they did punch me, and they did slap me, and they did kick me. But uh, praise God, it was nothing too serious. But uh, I'm not. I'm getting used to this. I'm acclimated to this, and it's not going to uh, stop us. It's not going to even slow us down. We're going to continue to open air preach in India. We're going to continue to preach the gospel wherever we go and distribute New Testaments every day if possible. At least five days a week. Unless the, there's some uh, extenuating circumstances. My family requires my attention, uh, something like of that nature. Whenever I go back to the U.S., I hit the streets almost every day when I'm in the U.S. I don't, you know, just visit and do tourism. Wherever I go, Israel. We've been to Israel. I've been to Israel five times, plan on going once a year. And uh, we'll preach on the streets every day I'm there in Israel, almost every day. Last time, of two weeks, every day we preached. To God be the glory. Yes. So I do, Gloria. Brothers and sisters, let us go and do likewise. Let's not fear what him who can kill the body only, but fear God who can kill both body and soul and hell. And um, thank you for your attention and for your prayers. And thank you for your support and your love for us. And um, go and do likewise. Pray that God would continue to give us courage. And we not back down. Pray that souls would be saved, that churches would be planted, that pastors would be trained, and books would be continually translated. We'd be able to help the poor. We're able to build this orphanage that we want to build, build the orphanage, the Bible Institute, uh, and, and these, the, the vision that God has given me. Which, you know, <laughs> really, my vision is to, is to die preaching the gospel in some unreached place, uh, some unreached village, or. Uh, or anywhere, and then you just to die preaching the gospel. I mean, that's my, <laughs> that's the vision. That's what I want to happen. But I, of course, I don't. I'm not suicidal. I don't try to be a martyr. But uh, just, uh, it's just uh, the greatest honor to die in the field of battle, to die a soldier's death, to die at my station. Uh, so pray for us that that uh, God would continue to give us grace and strength to do this. That I would continue to learn Telugu, and then now I can pick up Hindi also, so that I can preach with greater. Uh, effectiveness and more people can hear the word and as we continue to train up preachers and, and allow me to clarify yeah after they uh, after I was beaten in um, or a after they smashed our car with the brick that time in that small village a remote village uh, just a few about six months ago so seven months ago they uh, attempted to block the road they called their friends who formed a roadblock with motorcycles and uh, they attempted to block our path but I was able to drive the car into a ditch I was able to you know, punch the accelerator and hit, uh, drive into a ditch and thereby avert uh, their roadblock because if they had nabbed us, there's no, there's no justice. Just, you know, out in, the, out in these villages like the Wild West, there's no law enforcement. Who knows what they would do and no one would know about if they were to kill us. So, um, I just want to end on this note, my friends. I just want to end on this note to look to our Lord Jesus Christ and consider Him who endured such Hostility from sinners against himself, lest you grow weary and faint in your minds. Consider him, brothers and sisters. Consider how he, on that cross, how he was mocked and spit upon and punched and had his beard plucked out. How he was beaten, whipped with a cat of nine tails. How he was crucified at his hands and feet, impaled separated from his heavenly father bearing the sins of his people on that tree don't grow weary and faint don't grow fearful beloved don't be afraid of what those who can kill the body only let the, your greatest fear be the fear of not preaching the gospel I say it's my, my greatest fear is to be afraid of preaching the gospel 
May we simply fear God. Let's not be cowardly. Read Revelation 21, verse 8. The cowardly will have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone. Perfect love casts out fear. 1 John 4, 18. Uh, Matthew 10, uh, verses 36, 38, uh, and I believe 41. Fear not, fear not, fear not, Jesus said to his 12 apostles before he sent them out. Don't be afraid, Jesus says to us repeatedly. Don't be afraid. First John, for Second Timothy 1, 8. Uh, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and discipline and self-control. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me as prisoner, but share in suffering for the gospel by the power of God. He saved us and called us the holy, call, uh, holy calling, not according to our works, but according to His own purpose and grace, which He established in Christ before the world began. Brothers and sisters, let's be strong in the Lord. Let's not be afraid. Let's look to our Lord Jesus Christ. Consider Him, looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Let us bear our reproach with Him outside the camp, as He bore His reproach for our sins outside the walls. Go with Him outside, brothers and sisters. Let's not be afraid. Let's be strong in the Lord and the power of His might. To be filled with the Holy Spirit, and with joy, and with courage, with wisdom, with faith, with grace, and with power. Thank you, my friends. Look to Jesus. Give Him glory. Serve Him.